click start recording here. Uh, this recording will be made available to everyone who expressed interest in the webinar. It will uh, later be uploaded to YouTube. No, no pressure, Emily. <laughs> so uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Tyler Maycath from the Dennis Conservation Land Trust. And uh, many of you know me. It's great to see some familiar faces here today. And um, glad you can make it. Got a few more folks filing in here. So um, pleased to be here with uh, Emily Ray here today. Emily is our AmeriCorps Cape Cod member uh, serving the town of Dennis and Dennis Conservation Land Trust in the Barnesville County AmeriCorps Cape Cod program, which is a wonderful program in its, uh, I believe it's in year 21 now. Is that right? Year 22 or 21? 22. Oh, okay, geez, years fly by. Year 22, wow, so, so many folks have come through the program. Um, it's a very special program. Um, and um, you know these young people do so much for all of our towns on the Cape, <clears throat> and um, we're glad to see you keep going over the years. Um, here at Dennis Conservation Land Trust, we've had a member serving with with us for many years, um, since well before my time here. So uh, we're, we're pleased to participate in the program and year after year in partnership with the Town of Dennis Natural Resources Department. So uh, Emily um, has an individual placement with uh, the two organizations, that's what it's called. And then members also serve other organizations on group service days, which are Monday and Friday typically. So there are usually three days of individual service um, at partner organizations with the county. So um, it's pretty special in that um, folks get a chance to, many of them, um, experience um, professional working environment for the first time. You know, not Emily, but, um, you know, some members are as young as 19, and this is the first time they've ever worked in an office. Other members are a little bit older, um, have already graduated from college and had a number of experiences in the workplace. So it can be pretty different. Uh, the program accepts anyone over the age of 18. So if you know anyone interested in serving the county and especially working on uh, various environmental and conservation projects, um, you know, they can look up the Barnesville County AmeriCorps program for more information. Another great aspect of the program is that they provide members housing, which is pretty unique amongst AmeriCorps programs in this country. Uh, just to take a, a small step back, and I should have mentioned this from the outset, the AmeriCorps program is a federally funded program. The Barnesville County AmeriCorps Cape Cod program is in part funded by the county and in part funded by the federal government. Um, it's a national <clears throat> service experience. And uh, you know, there's all kinds of AmeriCorps programs out there. You can look them up if you, if you like. Uh, the VISTA program is a, is a really big nationwide program. There's a number of smaller uh, AmeriCorps programs focused on environmental issues throughout the country, including, um, you know, Student Conservation Association is one. I actually served in AmeriCorps myself twice. I did not serve in uh, the Barnesville County program, but I served with the program, which was called Mass Lift, uh, which later became a, a program called TerraCorps, which is a New England, uh, AmeriCorps program that focuses on service at land trusts and community conservation organizations. Um, so for me, that was a really great experience and I'm, I'm glad to see a lot of other people choosing um, 
service as an option to not only serve the communities that they're in, but also to help advance their own careers and provide some crucial experiences in the workplace. So uh, without much further ado, I'd like to introduce Emily. Emily actually interned with us over last summer while she was in Washington, um, but she's from Vermont. She's from Shelburne, Vermont, which is a really beautiful place on Lake Champlain. And um, yeah, we're so happy she could join us here for a service year, uh, albeit a strange one, but um, we're all doing the best we can under the circumstances. So um, I am glad that she could join all of you today and we can learn a, more, a lot more about what she's doing tonight. So um, I'd like to encourage you to post any questions you have in the chat or reserve them to the end. Um, you all are gonna be muted during the presentation so we can give Emily um, our undivided attention. And uh, once again, thank you so much for coming. Okay, thanks Emily. Yeah, thank you, Tyler. Um... I'm just going to share my screen now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was me. Oh, oh, I <laughs> see. Okay. Um, you had to mute everyone else, so. Okay, does, does it look good now? Yes? Okay, well, you're muted, but. I'm assuming it's fine. Okay, so- um, Looks good. Yep. <laughs> hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Emily, and I am, as Tyler mentioned, the AmeriCorps Cape Cod member serving Dennis this year. And so I'm working with the Dennis Conservation Land Trust and the Dennis Department of Natural Resources. And I've been here, I actually live in Barnstable um, since the beginning of September. Um, and I'll be here until the end of July. So I'm happy to be here tonight and share a little bit of what I've been up to. Okay, um, so this is what I wanna talk about tonight, a little bit about myself, uh, choosing to join AmeriCorps Cape Cod, um, serving Dennis, uh, my trail map project, and then some group service that I've done in Dennis and around the Cape. And I'll try to talk for about 20 minutes or a little less, and then I'll leave the floor open um, for any questions. And it'll, I, yeah, um, as Tyler mentioned, just put them in the chat or say at the end. So I grew up in Vermont. I um, have lived there most of my life. And then I went to Middlebury College in Vermont, uh, in Middlebury, Vermont. Um, a small liberal arts college. And I just graduated in May of 2020 um, on Zoom in my backyard, unfortunately. So um, I'm kind of fresh out of college. So my interest in land conservation and maps really started in middle school when I was on the Geography B team. But I always just knew that I cared about the earth. And in college, I completed a joint major in environmental studies and geography. And after my junior year, I got an internship at National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or uh, NOAA in their fisheries office in St. Petersburg, Florida. And this is just a map um, I made as part of the internship. Uh, and I spent the summer working on a database of endangered coral reefs grown in coral nurseries and then um, put back out on the reefs uh, as part of coral restoration efforts uh, after storms and uh, disease and dredging uh, climate change, among other reasons. Um, so here's a picture of staghorn coral, just one of the species I collected data on. Um, and then in my senior year of college, I did a capstone project focusing on finding parcels of conservation land accessible by public transportation and trying to find where it might be good to have a new public transportation line or 
um, to open up new protected land for recreation. So this is just uh, one of the maps that I made for that project um, of Chittenden County, the most populous county in Vermont with the red parcels representing uh, the most accessible protected land. So then, um, yeah, after I graduated, I moved to Washington State, which was very, uh, it's like a five day road trip. Um, but anyways, I was looking for internship and job opportunities. And I found on this Middlebury alumni job board, um, a posting about a remote internship at DCLT posted by Richard Johnston or his daughter, a founder. And then he is a founder of DCLT and a former president of the board. So I got connected with Julie and then started doing some remote work for DCLT, prim primarily uh, writing articles for the fall newsletter, which you can see here. And little did I know that this uh, internship would lead me to so many great opportunities. So now here I am in Dennis, uh, still working on projects with DCLT. And as I said before, I live in Barnstable with three housemates. And here we all are um, carrying bins to put oysters in at the sandwich boardwalk. So my internship at DCLT led me to AmeriCorps Cape Cod, obviously, um, because I knew that I wanted to find an AmeriCorps program uh, with an environmental focus. And then I found out about AmeriCorps Cape Cod and it just ended up being perfect. Um, I was super excited to uh, work on trail maps for DCLT because I had seen pre preliminary uh, GPS maps and I wanted to do full-fledged trail maps that I wasn't really able to do uh, during my remote internship because of software availability and then just other, I was working on the newsletter mostly. So I was also really interested in the four focus areas of AmeriCorps Cape Cod, natural resource management, um, environmental education, disaster preparedness and response and volunteer engagement. And, um, Oh, this is just a trail, part of a trail that we ended up clearing. Um, and then uh, living in Vermont for most of my life, I had actually figured out that I do love coastal environments. Um, and so the unique uh, ecosystems and wildlife, I really appreciate that here. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to be part of something bigger. So th these are my housemates working on that same trail that I showed earlier. Um, but there are 16 members this year for AmeriCorps Cape Cod, and we haven't really been able to serve together because of COVID. Um, but I, so I serve primarily with my house and with the member, sometimes with the members of the Bourne House. So in AmeriCorps, as Tyler mentioned, uh, we have independent placements um, and mine are the DCLT and the Dennis Department of Natural Resources. And I serve with DCLT on Tuesdays and Thursdays and with the DNR on Wednesdays. So um, at the Dennis DNR, I work with Amber Salvage, the shellfish constable for the town. And often I make the rounds around different conservation properties in Dennis. Um, this one is Indian lands and uh, checking trails for maintenance needs, dumping and other different issues. And I've also started working on a pamphlet project, creating pamphlets on the town's major conservation areas um, with trails and providing some important information and then some history and the story of the land. So, and also you can see on this, there's uh, just the most updated trail map from the town's GIS specialist because I haven't been working on maps for the town, just for DCLT. And in the spring, I'm planning on helping Amber with her shellfish and with projects like monitoring herring. So I'm excited for that. Now, um, 
with DCLT, I've been putting most of my energy towards making trail maps for four DCLT owned properties. And I've also uh, spent some time working on the fall newsletter that I started working on this summer. And if you haven't read DCLT's fall newsletter, it's on the website and I highly recommend checking it out. Um, and then I also just do little projects here and there, uh, walking the DCLT properties, taking pictures, and hopefully um, I'll be doing some land stewardship in the spring since I've been a bit cooped up uh, doing remote work for a while. Um, yeah, here's me in front of DCLT. <laughs> So this has been my main project so far, making trail maps for DCLT, which I'm essentially finished with, except that I will be creating a brochure out of these same trail maps probably in the next month. So I'm making trail maps so that anyone uh, living in Dennis or visiting Dennis can get really excited about getting out on the trails and also just know what to expect um, on the land protected by DCLT. And at least I think it's important to know where you can find a, a bench with a view like here at Swan River or where you can find a trailhead. Um, this is the one at Sisuit Neck. And maps for DCLT properties didn't really exist. Uh, there was a project that an intern had started making maps for the town in DCLT, um, but it was never finished. So I ended up making trail maps for four trails on DCLT owned land. Uh, one is Old Fort Field um, off of New Boston Road near the intersection between Old Bass River Road and Route 6A. And then Swan River Outlook, um, is at the Swamp Pond River near Lower County Road. And then the trail at Sisuit Neck is off of Sisuit Neck Road near the intersection between 134 and 6A. And then Coles Pond Bog is further east towards Crow's Pasture. And it's also, it's off of Coles Pond Drive. So the first step when you want to make a map is to collect data. It's like the building blocks of a map. So for this trail map project, I collected trail data from the Town of Dennis GIS specialist, Alicia Messier. And I collected road lines, town boundary lines, <coughs> excuse me, um, and wetland data from MassGIS or Oliver, which is the state of Massachusetts database of spatial information. Um, just see a screenshot here. And then I used data that DCLT maintains on conserved land protected in Dennis. And then finally, I noticed that the rivers weren't really showing up in the wetland data. So I found river data through the Cape Cod Commission's GIS Open Data Hub. So there is other software that you can use besides GIS uh, for maps like QGIS, but for the next part of making maps for me was putting all the data into ArcGIS. And I downloaded the data into shape files, uh, which is a form of data that can be dragged onto the map. Um, and you can put like lines, like the roads or polygons, like the land parcels that you can see here um, and various other things on the map. Okay, uh, so there are many complex ways you can manipulate data in GIS to solve problems um, or portray spatial data in different ways. For trail maps, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you're not really solving any problems, but one way I worked with this data was changing what's called the symbology. So that's, um, for example, the protected land parcels that are on this map um, here are all green, but you can change it so that they display with different colors um, for the different owners. So here you can see that there's some DCLT land in bright green, uh, near the Swan River, and then in the surrounding area, the darker green represents town conservation land. 
Another part of the mapping process to go is to go through your data and clean it, so to speak. So for example, with these maps, I edited the road data to delete all the driveways um, so that they wouldn't look like roads and be confusing on the final map. So you can see here just some deleted driveways. And then I also turned on the labels for the road names because it just makes it much easier. <laughs> Um, still in GIS, I needed to add in a scale bar, and, which you can see in the upper left hand corner here. And the scale bar changes if you zoom in or out in GIS. So it just reflects the actual um, scale of the data, even as it's changing. And after putting in the scale bar and the north arrow, I exported my map projects into Adobe Illustrator files. And for this, I exported the main maps that I had prepared along with inset maps while zoomed out on the same data. Okay. Um, Adobe Illustrator is a common tool to do the styling for trail maps, although I'm sure it's not the only option. In Illustrator, I made a lot of small and big changes in the style of the map, like changing the color of the DCLT and town parcels, <clears throat> um, the color of the trail, color of the elevation contours, uh, and more. And I changed how the strokes or the lines, like the trails and roads, looked in terms of width as well. I also added the wetland pattern um, into the wetland outline and added these symbols that you can see like parking and benches and scenic views. Oh, okay. Um, here, pretty simple. I just added a legend that I made in Illustrator. Um, so I styled inset maps separately, like this one for Old Fort Field. It has to be more clear because it's zoomed out. And inset maps have to illustrate how to get to a conservation area. So, oops. Um, after making the inset maps, I placed them onto the main maps. Sorry, I keep accidentally pressing this. <laughs> um, Hmm, it's confusing. Okay, one second. Okay. Um, so the final stage could also probably be done in other programs, but I used Microsoft Publisher. And I added in DCLT rules for the trails, uh, a description that's hopefully very enticing um, to curious hikers, and the directions with the address, and then finally my data sources. So here is the final map, one of the final maps that I made. I'll show all of them. If you're interested in reading through the full descriptions and directions that are on these, um, you can find them easily under properties on the DCLT website, which I highly recommend. Here's the last one. Um, so shifting focus a bit, I thought I would just end by giving a little taste of what I do for group service on Mondays and Fridays with AmeriCorps Cape Cod. So we do a lot of natural resource management and here are some examples. Uh, this was a project that I led at West Dennis Beach, um, pulling oysters out of oyster bags and then seeding the oysters. Right there, you can see. Um, and we also unearthed a stone wall from invasive species like bittersweet at the conservation land across the street from Shoup Community Gardens in Dennis. Um, and then this, oh, that's just 
once we were mostly finished. Um, this was another invasive species that we pulled up a lot of, Japanese knotwood, um, or sorry, weed, at an arboretum and cemetery in Harwich. And this is Caitlin, my uh, shortest roommate, standing next to the dumpster we filled with Japanese knotweed. So we also do some environmental education and this mostly revolves around Wetfest, a water festival for eight to 12 year olds on the Cape that teaches them about protecting their water, um, where their drinking water comes from and just the aquifer in general. So here's a snapshot of an activity that I created for kids to drag the sand dunes um, onto the flood hazard map. And then we've also done things like uh, record videos showing kids how to test uh, water for turbidity or how clear the water is. We also do disaster preparedness and response. Um, here's a project that we did involving a conix box that holds all the shelter supplies for Yarmouth and Barnstable. Oh, here are a couple more pictures. It's the finished one. And then um, finally, we got to help do a test run with some tents for COVID-19 vaccination clinics. And we decided that rolling on the tents was an effective way to make it uh, stay down before pushing it or rolling it back up. So that's all I've got. Um, yeah, thanks for making it this far. And I'd be happy to answer any questions about anything I said. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Emily. That was great. And um, really appreciate your presentation. Uh, <laughs> how did that rolling come about? <laughs> Impromptu? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice use of boomerang there. <laughs> uh, Oh, great. I see Julie's here. Maybe she wants to say a word before we take a few questions. Hi, Julie. Hey, am I unmuted? Okay, great. Um, thank you. And um, great to see you all here tonight. I think that these webinars, um, thank you, Tyler, for putting these together, are a good way for us to connect with, with our members. We miss you all and, and want to find ways to connect more. And Emily's been a great help, as you can see, with our mapping uh, programs. And uh, I think it was really interesting to see all the variety of things that she's been doing. We've been hearing about them, but Emily, you're really, you're really doing a lot of different things during this COVID time. And we, we're so appreciative. Um, I don't know if you want to tell folks a little bit about, um, you know, some ideas that you have for next steps. We're going to be putting our brochure together, but um, other ideas as we uh, you know, we have uh, several months still. We're going to be working out on the land as well. But what's what's <laughs> most exciting to you coming up? How about that? <laughs> Let me put you on the yeah. Screen. <laughs> um, I mean, probably working on the land. Uh, <laughs> what you said. I'm I'm excited just to be outside. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good. And uh, and I don't know if you want to tell folks about some of your your athletic. Um, endeavors with your your uh, housemates you've been keeping busy in one way or another uh, what have you been doing to keep busy and uh, and exercise and be outdoors when you you've had to be um, kind of cooped up for a while uh, you know and not able to come into the office but what have you been up to when uh, when you have time off <laughs> how about that yeah um, I'll say one of the more exciting things is that where I live is right next to West Barnstable Conservation Area. So there are so many uh, mountain biking trails and running trails. So we go on those a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, nice. yeah, we, we play a lot of sports together. We found a spike ball 
uh, net on the side of the road. So we've been doing that a lot. <laughs> good, going, good going. Okay, well, Great. I'll let others ask questions, but thanks so much for doing it tonight. Really appreciate it. And Tyler, thank you. And I appreciate all of you uh, coming out on a, on a night. Uh, and and I know that it, there are a lot of things that uh, that are going on, but thanks for, for putting the Dennis Conservation Land Trust on your list. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Julie. So, um, yeah, by the way, we, if it wasn't apparent, we're very excited to have these maps. And it will be a great resource for us to share some of our most important conservation areas um, in the upcoming future. So, way to go. Long time coming. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Our first question uh, is from Sajita Clark. And I think we kind of answered it, but um, let's just see. Um, she'd like to answer, her, ask her question here. Sorry. Hey there. Hey there. Uh, I'm a resident for 45 years of South Dennis on Bass River, and mm -hmm. I just want to thank you for doing what you're doing. And some of these trails, Coles Pond Road, the places we've walked, and I had no idea that there actually was a Dennis Conservation Trail. So uh, I look forward to checking them out. But I was asking, will these be printed and available to residents and, and visitors to Dennis? Um, yes, I think the plan is to print them. Uh, I don't know, Julie might know more. But. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're gonna make it into a, a nice brochure that we can distribute to our members and the public. Excellent. So I have a question in that regard. What's the experience in putting these out at trail heads? The trails themselves aren't very long, but um, we're, my wife and I are used to getting out. Oftentimes you see empty boxes or boxes that have been vandalized. Um, what's mm. your thinking in that regard? Um, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Hi, Tom. Hello nice there, to see you. Tyler. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so... Um, in the future, we intend to hopefully have a kiosk at each of our most important trailheads um, and a trail box where we can distribute maps, also making them available through the website and um, you know other places throughout town, such as the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so, you know, um, I think I find in my experience that um, if the kiosks are located relatively close to the road that they're less likely to be vandalized. So um, I guess that would be my hope in such a distribution system, Tom. Got it. Look forward to your thoughts on that too, though. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, interesting question here from Tony. <laughs> Yeah, I can respond to that. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's let's see if she wants to. Um... Uh, I just unmuted. I got your message. Hey, Emily. Uh, I'm curious to know what drew you to mapping, and did you have specific classes at college? As someone who is three or four generations removed from you, I'm just curious about what they are teaching you in college. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, well, for my major, it was required to take uh, GIS, like intro class, which I think a lot of people do when they have like environmental majors um, or geography. Uh, and then I also ended up taking a cartography course. Um, so that was directly map making. And then 
for some of my senior classes, I, I had courses that like incorporated GIS, like the one I mentioned with transportation, but it was fun. I mean, it, it was really hard, the learning GIS, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, as someone who also uses GIS, there's, there's never not learning that <laughs> uh, that is happening. Um, you know, it's, you can dive really deeply into it and uh, get really technical with it. Um, so it can be a great career option for people who are, have uh, great technical skills like you. Um, there's a question from Pam, which um, I think we've already kind of answered here. So um, at this point, um, I'm just going to open it up. And um, if someone has a burning question, you can unmute yourself and um, ask your question, or you can go to reactions and raise your hand. Hi, uh, this is Sherman. Um I, I was a volunteer, I was a volunteer with the Acton uh, Land Stewardship Committee, and they uh, oh. did you see the maps that they did or? I have not. Okay, I, I can maybe send a link. Uh, I don't know, maybe to you, Tyler, and then uh, let it get uh, forwarded around. The, the the town, one person in particular, uh, d d followed the path that you did, Emily, uh, drawing uh, municipal data and uh, and actually. Uh, crafted separate maps, online maps, accessible through uh, smartphones, through QR codes to replace uh, actual a pamphlet of maps. And it was, uh, we have parking lots at, at probably, or we did have parking lots at maybe uh, 10 or 12 of the uh, parcels in town. We, there were 16 or 18 in, in Acton. And, but this is a, a, you know, a great, great start for, for Dennis. And uh, it, uh, it really, uh, sets walkers and hikers and uh, bikers up for a, you know, a great time, good direction. Yeah, I know that uh, on some of the DCLT kiosks, there actually are QR codes. So we could probably um, do something about that. That'd be cool. Can you say what a QR code is? Ooh, they're <laughs> those like little black and white codes that you can- Oh, those little square yeah, things. Scan it on your phone. I got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Sure. Hey, Larry. Yeah. Hi, Emily. Thank you for the work that you do. Um, if you live next to West Bonstable Conservation, which our us old time is called TOT, they uh, changed the name. I'm sure you know the history of that. Um, I am a member of the Cape Cod chapter of New England Mountain Bike Association. Oh. Are, are you familiar with them? I, I've heard of it, yeah. They've just done, uh, the, the Town of Sandwich Conservation invited the club in. We made all new trails for the high school mountain bike program. And um, it served two purposes. It opened up Maple Swamp, if you're familiar with mm -hmm. Maple Swamp. Um, and it, yep. and it, it was becoming a real problem for homeless. And they figured with the more traffic in there, um, it would kind of clean up the area. So it accomplished two things. But um, I have a real interest in maps. And one of the things that I do is I also belong to the uh, Cape Cod chapter of the Appalachian Mountain Club. And we use this um, app and it's because somebody mentioned the QR code. We use this um, cycling app called Ride with GPS. Are you familiar with it? Um, I haven't heard of that, no. Okay, Ride with GPS is the most amazing um, GPS cycling app. And the new feature that they just added into it is in the past, they've always used open street maps, which I'm sure you you're familiar with that. The problem with open street maps, if a trail gets abandoned, it'll nobody cleans up the map. Mm -hmm. But what Ride with GPS did was everybody that tracks their rides, and they have thousands of members, um, they've developed what's called a heat map. So I'm one of the leaders of some rides, and I have these amazing 
Dennis adventure rides, we call them, that I connect 30 miles of all dirt. Dennis, Howard, Brewster. Um, are you familiar with the Mother's Bog, uh, which Brewster just opened up and attaches to the Dennis Water District? And so we, so by using the heat map, which shows up on your iPhone, you can actually see where people are riding. And the mm -hmm. more they ride, the more the heat map gets distinctive. And then what I can do is I can go over and on a simple iPad, I can create a route using that, similar to like you make your maps, I can create a route and then save it. And then other people can actually follow it. It's absolutely amazing. So when I know you don't have any spare time, but you should look at that app. It's called Ride with GPS, <laughs> and it's it's just amazing. I you know an old timer like me, I can make my own maps. Yeah, that's the, very cool. The other the other question I have though for you and, and maybe for the for the uh, Dennis Conservation is in my travels in all of the trails that people don't even realize that are in Dennis. There was an interactive um, Massachusetts map that you can see parcels now. Behind Patriot Square is miles of trail. Really? And yeah. when we go in there, we try to figure out if conservation can protect these lands. But a lot of it says owners unknown. Hmm. Whatever happens to that land? I, Tyler, do you know the answer to that? Uh, possibly. So, um, Thanks for your question uh, very much, Larry, and thank you for sharing uh, the information about um, your, the mountain bike app that you're using. Uh, very interesting. I haven't heard about that before. Yeah, it's, it's a real good one. Yeah, great. Um, so uh, owners on known parcels, um, you know, they're not unique to Dennis or to Cape Cod. No. But um, one of the unique issues that we have on Cape Cod is the Barnesville County Registry of Deeds burned to the ground in the early 1800s. And so, um, you know, in some cases, records were lost, uh, which is interesting. Um, in, in many cases, there are deeds that go back to the 1800s and uh, no one is really sure who the heirs are or there are a great many number of heirs. And so um, a lot of properties have no one owner that are owners unknown. They might have hundred separate owners and uh, we know from, we know from experience that um, Sometimes eventually the owners are co contacted by a lawyer and um, they all agree to sell. So that does happen. Uh, sometimes what also happens is the town will claim um, eminent domain and they will take a parcel for non-payment of taxes. Uh, all of which, you know, um, are actions that mostly happen at the municipal level. So uh, for us, um, as a small nonprofit land trust, we're definitely interested in any open space that is out there. Um, it can be a little bit difficult with some of these owner non unknown parcels because um, it may require a lot of research and you know, research means someone's time and then money to pay them. Um, but we, we are definitely open to looking at these parcels. So yeah, thank you for bringing you that up. Tyler, are you familiar with all the trails behind Patriot Square? Yeah, so um, uh, some of that land is owned by um, various private individuals and corporations. Uh, some of it's owned by the town of Dennis. And so the town of Dennis is, um, you know, expanding their operations around their transfer station for right. uh, for wastewater and for, um, you know, their new um, glass recycling facilities. And then some other adjacent lands uh, along the Dennis Harwich line 
uh, to the north are being developed by uh, various entities. Um, and um, if you've been over there um, behind Robert B. Hour, then um, you might know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of construction going on over there around Eagle oh, Pond. You're talking off of Main Street Extension? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I know so, every trail um, in Howard and Dennis. <laughs> It really sounds like you do, Larry. <laughs> That's great. Um, it's a real interesting area back there. So, uh, and uh, for anyone who's listening, no one is actively trying to keep people out of there. So uh, you're free to explore on your own. Um, and uh, we look forward to hearing what you find out there. So um, yeah, thanks. Um, in the interest of, uh, everyone's time, especially Emily's. It's um, just after 7.15. And I'm just wondering if other folks out there have any questions about uh, what we heard from Emily tonight. Or even if you'd just like to chime in. I think Pam might have a question. Yes. Pam. First, Hi, I just Pam. wanted to say to Larry Kornetsky that my husband, Tom O'Hearn, was your big competitor for a few years in the last gas bike ride. And oh in the my goodness! Training for that, we also discovered the um, stuff that you were talking about behind, um, you know, uh, 134 and and off of Main Street. So it was really kind of cool to see you. Tom's in memory care at Maplewood and Brewster now. But oh, I'm so I, so. Oh, but sorry I know to hear that. that um, conservation and participating in whatever we could do to help further conservation and the work of the trust was tremendously important to us. And, it, and I'm gonna, you know, when I see him next, I'm gonna mention your name and I'll let you know the reaction to Tyler and Julie. Oh, uh, did he make the hall of fame? Um, yeah, he did as a matter of fact. You know, the plaque is over at, um... 10 pin eatery. Yes. Yes. Somebody told us that and I haven't been able to see it, but anyway, yeah, I, so it was I, really I cool to, yeah. to see you and see that you're committed to the absolutely fabulous work of the Dennis Conservation Land Trust. So, and the other thing I just wanted to say quickly was, I think we need to let the media know about all of the stuff that's been going on in terms of the trails and get people really excited about what's available to them. That's it, thank you. Thanks, Pam. And um, I'll just say if, if, if you know Tom, um, like I do, um, it's, it's, um, it's very sad to hear about his health and what you've been going through, but I feel uh, very privileged to know him and you as well, Pam. So thank you thank very you. much. Keep up the good work, kids. We're trying. Okay. <laughs> and um, uh, Sherman shared something in the chat about Acton Trails. Um, I find that uh, items in the chat often go away after we share the recording. So um, if you see something in there that you'd like to save for later, like um, Acton Trails or DCLT Falls, Fall Newsletter link, um, I, would, I would urge you to save those now um, because they may not be available later on. Um, does anyone else have any questions before we end here? Um, I, I would like to introduce the, the next webinar um, before we do end, but um, I would, we would, Emily would entertain um, more questions if you have them. Okay, um, would you like to say a few words, Emily, before um, I close out the program? Um, no, not really, just thanks everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we're very grateful for your work and for the work of all of the members of AmeriCorps Cape Cod, especially during this unusual and um, rather strange year, but um, we'll continue to benefit from your work for years to come. So uh, thank you very much. Um, so uh, we will be continuing these webinars as time goes on. Um, our next webinar 
is scheduled for March 17th with uh, Russell Norton from the Cape Cod Cooperative Extension. And um, Russell is a horticulturist. He's the county horticulturist. Um, the Cape Cod Cooperative Extension, as you might've learned last month, is, um, is a part of the UMass system, actually. So the, the Cooperative Extension system was, was set up by Congress as part of the land grant system many, many years ago. Um, it goes back to the 1800s, I believe. Um, uh, but we're very fortunate to have a lot of these expert folks work, working at the county level, including Russell. Um, I think it'll be a fantastic presentation. We're gonna learn a lot about native trees and shrubs to plant for your yard that will, uh, that will enhance the beauty of your yard and that have a lot of value for wildlife. Um, you know, um, there's been a lot of pres presenters presenting on this subject recently, um, but I would just urge you uh, to attend if you can, because as it turns out, uh, the natural value of all of our yards um, has a profound impact on conservation. So um, as a land trust, we can't do all this work on our own. Um, and, you know, we urge all of you to, um, you know, practice the conservation ethic in your own yard and um, take small steps towards um, making wildlife more at home in your own yard. Um, so uh, we look forward to learning about what Russell suggests for all of us next month. Um, thank you all so much for attending. I will share out uh, the video for this presentation after uh, we upload it to YouTube. Thank you most especially to Emily and for um, continuing her work and um, being patient with this most unusual year. Thank you all so much for supporting the Dennis Conservation Land Trust. We really couldn't do it without you, whether you're a volunteer, a member, or a soon-to-be member. Thank you very much. And um, I hope you all have a very pleasant evening. And we hope to see you soon. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.